Hi, today we are going to talk about cascading style sheets. What are cascading style sheets? Now, cascading style sheets uh, is a technology that would help web designers to style their web pages or websites. Now, the word cascading refers to the way in which the CSS applies one style on top of the other. And the style sheets, uh, they control the look and feel of our web document. So why should we use CSS or cascading style sheets? It's because it allows one to apply specific styles to specific HTML elements. Again, it is also very advantageous because you are able to separate style from content. Therefore, it means that uh, all formatting as much as possible should be removed from the HTML document and then stored in a separate CSS file. So CSS are rules we use to control the way a web browser displays elements uh, on a page. And uh, it is a fast and efficient way to control how your page is displayed. It is mentioned that when you, when you separate content and style, then uh, your website will perform much better as compared to when we have them all together. So that means that uh, CSS is a better way of uh, performing or improving the performance of websites. Again, uh, CSS would, dis would define how to display your HTML elements by element name, ID, or class. That means that uh, you can uh, have your elements or your tags identified by either an ID or a class or an element name and then on a separate CSS file, you can determine how that specific uh, element is going to dictate how the document is going to appear or behave. So with HTML, you will define the content of the document, uh, headings, paragraphs, lists, tables, etc. And then you'll use uh, CSS to actually define how each of the above, let's say the paragraph list, tables, labels, etc., are going to look or behave in the web page website. So when we are defining CSS in your HTML document, uh, there are three possible ways in which you can do it. Number one, you can reference to an external.css file. Secondly, you can write it directly in the head tag, right inside the style tag. And then thirdly, you can use what we call as inline or written within the HTML code itself. So this is how we define HTML for our various documents, HTML documents. So when we use the very first method of uh, referencing an external .css file, it means that uh, on one hand, you're going to have your HTML document written. And then on the other hand, on a separate file, you're going to have your .css file. This .css file will have instructions telling the website how this HTML document is going to behave. Now, this is the most important uh, part when it comes to defining CSS for your document. So it is always recommended to use the external, the external.css file 
during your web page website uh, construction number two we can write it directly on the head tag so in a html document you can have a style uh, tag having some of these definitions or some of these instructions or rules within your html document now that is also a better way of doing it but not an efficient way and then finally inline or written within the html code it means that uh, as you're busy typing your work you will have the definition within the uh, individual tags for example you can be writing a paragraph you can state the style within the paragraph uh, tag so that is in line it's just right in within the html code unlike the very first one now whereby you just write the paragraph the way you want it but how it's going to look and appear will be dictated by the css file that is uh, external that is separate from the html document itself now the css syntax is very important what we are going to do here we are going to note that uh, it has this uh, uh, it follows this uh, this uh, this description whereby we have what we call as a selector then you have opening brace and then we have a property and then we have a colon and then we have a value and then a semicolon and then you can continue having many other properties and uh, uh, values coming thereafter so we would state it this way that css is nothing but a set of rules which specify display properties secondly css would control many properties which are called declarations often enclosed in curly braces now this is a declaration for example h1 which is a selector declares that uh, this h1 this first or oh, this very big heading should have a color color is the property and the value of the color is blue so this color property this property value color blue property value uh, representation uh, is what we call as a declaration so a selector would have more one or more declarations that's very important so that's why they say css control many properties called declarations now often enclosed within curly braces and then each declaration ends up in a semicolon meaning that uh, for example here we can have h1 our heading should be color blue that is one declaration and then the font size is 12 pixels so that's a, a, a separate and a second declaration uh, within one syntax so that is very important that uh, we need to know that each declaration ends up with a semicolon so once you see this semicolon you know the first declaration is over and then you can start another declaration that's why we have another property here and then a colon followed by another value so this is the second declaration and then it says here that uh, each element is chosen in c ss by the selector and defined in the declaration by a property and a value so this is what actually happens for example we have written our separate html document now you want to manipulate or change how one element or two elements is going to appear on your website that element that you want to change is what you're going to put here or to write here this is the selector so it's going to be selected in your html document and then what you want that uh, tag to do or to appear is the declaration and the color blue that property and value would of course 
be utilized in defining how your page or your website is going to appear so that is what is important let's understand that uh, the css syntax comes this way we have a selector somewhere and then we have a property as a declaration and then a value so what comes first is selector opening brace property a colon after each property we have a full colon and then we have a value that follows that one and then a semi colon there are some rules that are being used when we are writing this syntax css syntax and some of them are here it states that uh, the name of the element being formatted is called as a selector and is followed by a left curly bracket so the element that is being formatted for example in our previous example here this h1 header one is what is called as the selector and then each declaration is on a new line now this declaration in this case uh, color blue this font should have been in a new line here to show us that it's a new declaration and it's not uh, a hard uh, rule it's just for the sake of readability you can see it right here you had background image here and then background image repeat no something like that so it's always good for you to have new declarations being displayed on a new line then it goes on saying that uh, this is because of readability and it's because of editing and it's also because of troubleshooting it's easy for you to see how your doc your code is if you miss out something in your code it's easy to spot it out so that's why we are always encouraged and it's recommended to have each declaration on a new line next uh, each property is separated by from the value with a full colon so each property is separated from its value or from the values with a full colon we've seen that one and each value is ended with a semicolon we've seen that one and after the last declaration you have a right curly bracket to end the style rule so these are rules so what we have here are rules so and these rules are what make up css that's why we call them is a set of rules which specify display properties so the display property is for example h1 would be color blue and the size is going to be 12. so the final uh, uh, thing i want to mention here is that uh, quotation marks are not used to surround the c to surround the values in css so it's not going to be like what we use in other uh, places css is slightly different you'll get that you'll avoid the uh, equal signs quotation marks and then uh, greater or less than symbol all these tags like things so css slightly different from uh, uh, html but then let's follow it up and see what's gonna happen so this is a good example of various css styling uh, uh, techniques uh, how they are being applied for example we can style the backgrounds of our document and we can have a back color or the background image or the background repeat now for example here we have body now this is the selector this selector is going to select the body of an html document so that means that the whole body is gonna have a background color blue so this select all the not all actually the body of the HTML document is just going to be blue now for example here if you had some division here you can have some image there or anything else and then we can have some background image then you can have a link to that image and then you can have a background repeat no repeat currently when you put up some image it keeps on uh, repeating itself so you have to state that th there's no repetition so 
this is how we can start styling the background so backgrounds can have one color two they can also have image and then you can want you may you might want also to control how the image is going to appear that is all to do with the background css styling background the next thing is uh, we can also style the text now many many times uh, we have text on our paragraphs or on our headings or sometimes in a division or div class that is uh, always uh, possible so in this select in this syntax we have this p meaning that uh, it's calling to all p's in the html document to have color blue or the paragraph now on this other hand uh, we have this h1 is a selector the selector is selecting the heading h1 in the html document it means that this heading is gonna have the color gray and then it's going to be underlined and then it's going to be in uppercase and then 10 pixels and then it's gonna be in Arial font family and then the font size is gonna be 15 uh, pixels i'm sorry this is text ident from the the identification is going to be 10 uh, pixels so that is what happens uh, when you're coming to text text so it means that uh, on this selector area you can have h1 you can have this or you can have many other uh, elements being uh, used as selectors now uh, we can also style links now a good example is when you are googling or you are using a website when you pass your mouse over a link you might see some action there or when you visit a link you'd see that uh, as you are visiting other links that link is already highlighted with some color that is a styling um, cousin that has been used there so they say here that uh, links can be styled just like any other text but they have a special function uh, called the link state so this link state is what happens uh, when you interact with a link so there are four interactions and they are one a normal link that has not been clicked so that is uh, the first state not clicked if a link has been visited then a link has been clicked or if you hover over a link a link when the mouse is push, pushed over it or when a link is active and this is an example uh, to show that uh, this link uh, uh, which is unvisited uh, in our case we want it to be color red if it's visited we want it to be blue if, if we are hovering over it it should show some green color and then if it's active it should be black so this we have seen many times when we are either googling or we're just on the internet the more you visit a link you would later on see that this link has a different color from another so what has been done to that is css styling now you can also do that to your c to your html document now on the other hand again we can style tables and you can choose what you want to style on a table so like in this case they say that uh, tables can be styled by addressing each of the elements that construct them now you can have a table row a table header and then a table data cell that can all be addressed by this css styling uh, format and then in this case you're seeing here we are calling a table as a selector this table row and this data cell and then we're trying to say that the border is supposed to be one pixel that is what happens so tables can also be styled now finally one of the most important things for us to understand is the css box model the CSS box model is very important. It's just actually how we can view the whole concept of CSS and uh, uh, HTML uh, 
modification of uh, your website so we can view it from this perspective it says that uh, when addressing the box model uh, it refers to the following important concepts the content the border the padding the background image the background color and sometimes even the margin so all information is stored on your oh, oh, on your website and uh, the most important thing i would want to say is the content so actual content means actual html elements and then we have a border that always uh, uh, goes about or surrounds your content and then the padding is spaced between this content and its border and then we can have background images or colors coming in there and then we can have margin and the spaces between the boxes and its surrounding knowing this uh, uh, CSS box model means that you know where your documents or where your objects in your website are going to be positions and you can always navigate or manipulate them based on your need so it's very important uh, and then uh, finally here for example they state that uh, there is something by the name position declaration is also very important because it comes in these two values relative or absolute it means that uh, you sometimes even state where your new page is going to start loading either on a relative position or absolute position so absolute can be fixed some on the top left and then relative depending on what you're going to pass to to the css instruction now finally once you have everything done your css file is supposed to be linked with your html document and that's why we will use the link the link tag this link tag is going to do that it says that uh, your c your style sheets need to be attached to your web page using the link tag which is added in the head section of coding so if you have it you are going to be able to if you have your html document you're going to add a new link just right into the head section and then this is what happens this link uh, would come up with the following three attributes these attributes are rel or relation and then type and then the hatch ref the h ref now right here we've tried to explain what that is so in many cases uh, you'll get that uh, the rel will have this default value coming here it's a style the relationship between this css document and uh, the html document it's that this is a style sheet and uh, number two the type of uh, text or information that you are going to have in that uh, css it's always text or just css it's this is standard standard uh, attributes that are, are used or values for attributes now what is important now it is the h ref now the reference this is like a link you state the name of the file that uh, you are trying to refer to this specifies the name of the given style sheets created so that's very important now in a html document if you have this href you are trying to say that it's a style sheet and it has got texts which are style sheets and the name of that file is uh, you can have style or you can have email or you can have kiss university or ksu or you can have the name that you're going to give is what is going to come here and at times you can give even the full address or the location where it can be gotten from that is very very important it's going to help us to link to the html document and we can have this information being styled up thank you now let's check out the practical video to see how we can implement what we've learned in this theory class. Thank you.